everybody, uh, Jeff Gibby here over at Metastock. I hope you're having a great evening. I uh, just want to make sure everybody can hear me okay. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of a sound test. If you can hear me, um, just let me know. Uh, a little bit of an important business. We have a lot of sign-ups today. Uh, thanks for everybody. Uh, we obviously have a very good speaker. So um, I, I want to say, uh, sp do a special welcome to Justin for coming in. This is his very first webinar. So uh, welcome Justin from Perth, Australia. Um, hope you enjoy it. Anyway, it's not my first. I've done a few of these over the years. Let's go ahead and get going here. Uh, as you know, I'm going to read this out loud. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I was starting to laugh a little bit. Lewis uh, chimed in with a thing saying it's his 100th webinar. And I actually wish I had kept track. I can't imagine how many I've done so far, if you count especially all the ones I've introed for and that kind of stuff. But in any case, whether this is your first or your 100th, or your 3,000th. I hope it's a good one for you today. And we certainly do have a good speaker. Um, somebody that almost doesn't need an introduction, uh, John Bollinger. Um, I, I remember meeting John uh, pretty early in my Metastock career, which really puts it probably 18, 17 years ago. Um, I kind of don't need to really introduce him. I mean, he's the creator of Bollinger Bands. Um, one thing, on a personal note, I've always known John um, to be... Uh, just such a nice guy. Uh, he's somebody that I've always had a lot of respect for because he's not only a great technician, but just really a great guy. Uh, he's always fun to talk to, always enjoyable to talk to, and that kind of stuff. I could rattle off like some of the awards that he won. Like in 2015, he just was awarded with the um, International Federation of Technical Analysis uh, uh, Award. Uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, which is a pretty big deal. He was the first person to get a CFA and a CMT, according to the bio I'm looking at. But he's just a great guy, uh, uh, great mathematician, great technical analysis, technical analyst. So let's bring him on. I'm going to get out of the way a little bit here. And uh, John, I'm going to go ahead and send the control of the screen over to you. I know that was a, a very good introduction for you. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add? No, Jeff, I think that kind of covers it. I'm, you know, <laughs> it's been a um, good time um, working with uh, um, yourself and all the rest of the fine people at Metastock over the years. Um, one of the original Metastock users um, way back before, uh, um, before um, in the very first uh, Windows edition and the years before that. So I've been around in the Metastock world for a long time. Awesome. I'm, well, I'm going to turn, I'm going to get out of the way. All righty. Take care. And uh, welcome, Justin. I'll try to be gentle. I'm known for going rather fast in these webinars because I have a lot of material that I want to cover. Um, so I'll, I'll try to slow down a little bit. So make your first webinar experience uh, uh, a little bit more fun. So today we're going to talk about the sort of juncture of Metastock and, and Bollinger Bands. Um, just about the first toolkit that I ever put together, I put together with good folks at Metastock, um, and it covers a wide variety of Bollinger Band tools and some volume indicators, some other related in indicators. We'll go through some of those today and how to use some of those. But um, the other piece that um, Metastock has that reflects my work is a, a package that was programmed by a brilliant guy that works uh, um, for Metastock by the name of John Slauson. Um, he uh, um, took an article that I wrote um, in technical analysis of stocks and commodities uh, a long time ago and, and programmed it into a very useful system. But the system had a problem. It just didn't generate a lot of trade. So, what he did is he, he coupled it with it with a scanner that would scan a universe to pick out stocks that had signals. So um, 
for any given stock, um, the Bollinger Band system that Metastock has available doesn't signal very often, but if you take it and run it on a decent universe of stocks, which is very easy to do, um, then any given day you're liable to have a, a good set of signals, um, both positive and or negative. So there are two different pieces of the puzzle here. The Bollinger Band Toolkit, which is really a set of tools for the do-it-yourselfer. It has a, a, a bunch of Bollinger Band indicators, some volume indicators, and, and some other related things. It has a, a Bollinger Band expert, um, and then it also covers the methods um, that I did in my book, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands. So without any further ado, let's get to the... Um, Let's get to the heart of the matter here. See if I can. Okay, so our aim is always to ask the markets for um, information. We never want to get caught arguing with the markets. We don't want to tell the markets what we want to do. We always want to ask the markets what to do, and we want to try to get in sync with what's happening um, in the markets. And we want to use relative analysis, not absolutes. That, so I'll make that clearer a, a, as we go along with some, some examples. Uh, but a lot of people um, will get focused on a specific level or, or, or some, some hard fact in the market. We like to focus on where the bands are and where prices is in relation to the bands and couple that information with some information from indicators uh, to arrive at rational investment decisions. And our final aim in this talk is to separate our emotions from trading. Uh, anytime our emotions get involved in the trading process, it's always a problem and it always ends up in trading losses. So we want a rigorous approach so that we can execute unemotional trading decisions. So with those aims in mind, we want to increase our winning trades as a percentage of total trades. Say uh, um, we have um, a decent trading system that's generating 60% winning traders and 40% losing traders, or 6 out of 10 winning trades. Uh, we want to try to push that towards 65% or 66 67%. You'd be amazed over the long haul in terms of an equity curve how much difference that makes. We also want to increase the size of our winners relative to the size of our losing trades. So if we have a system that has a where the winners are t average twice the size of, of losers, we want to push that to 2.2 or 2.3, 2.4. And again, the, over the long haul, these very small changes in, the, in these ratios make a tremendous impact on our equity curve. So we, those are the two um, primary avenues um, that one can focus on to better one's investment performance. We can use Bollinger Bands um, and related tools and techniques to accomplish both of those goals. So once we know our trading stats, our winning percent and our win-loss ratio, our drawdowns, we can compute our optimal trade size and exploit our edge to the, to the fullest. I don't have time to really get into this in this today's seminar. But if, you, if you're not focusing on trade size and, and what trade size you should be using, you're ignoring a very important uh, um, trading dimension. And I, I recommend very highly the work of Ralph Vince and, on Optimal F and um, also the work of uh, um, Van Tharp. Um, he's, uh, uh, both of these gentlemen have done a lot of work in trying to figure out what the optimal trade size for any given trading approach is, and that can help you an awful lot. So with all that in mind, um, let's take a look at a how Bollinger Bands can help us identify trading opportunities where the odds of success are in our favor and the risk-reward ratios are favorable. So we're going to start by building up a chart. Um, and I used um, Metastock 14 for these. Um, I just upgraded to Metastock 14 yesterday. Um, so I probably haven't gotten all of, um, all of what's good and new and shiny in it uh, um, under my belt yet, but um, these charts came out pretty easily and, pr and, and pretty nicely, so I'm pretty impressed with uh, Metastock 14 and, and its new console. Um, so we're going to start with the line chart, and, and by definition, a line chart's too simplistic. It hides important data, and it deprives us of our pattern recognition efforts. Here's the line. Here's the chart that we're going to look at. It's simply a chart of SPY um, over the past years. Um, over the past year, and we're going to focus on there are 
uh, two W bottoms and, and uh, a top formation here that we're going to focus on today. Let me see if I can get my uh, little spotlight working here. So this is the top area that we're going to focus on somewhat, and to a lesser extent we'll focus on on this top area. But what we're really going to focus on are these two W bottoms, because they're the most important technical features of, of the past um, year, and um, they were really, really important to get right. Um, otherwise, you ended up in an overly bearish position and on the wrong side of, of the, the market. So we want to switch from a line chart to a bar chart. The, it's the most typical technical analysis chart, and it gets a lot uh, of the basic more a lot more of the basic information across. Um, so here, here we have a bar chart, and I just go back to the line chart and look look at the right hand side here where, where this W pattern is being formed. It, it's it's quite a different picture than, than you see here. You, you see in the, in the line chart, it looks like we're screaming out into a new bear market, but the bar chart gives you a, a much better picture. So what we're doing is we're, we're trying to prepare our information for our eyes and for the pattern recognition engine that we were born with, which is a very powerful pattern recognition engine. We're trying to give it the most information that we can so it can help us make the best possible decisions. Of course, at, at, as a later stage, we can convert those ideas into rigorous trading systems, um, which is an even better idea. So we're going to switch uh, um, now to candlesticks. Um, and the reason I like candlesticks is they highlight the relationship between the open and close. They allow one to see the price structure more clearly, and get, we, they transmit a little bit more information to that pattern recognition engine that we have. Um, reversal days and signs of strength and weakness are especially clear here. So here's the... Um, Here's that same chart, but now with candlesticks, and I, I, I think it's just dr dramatically clearer what's what, what's going on, and much easier to see, especially when when we look, we look at this W bottom, which was so troublesome for for people. Most investment advisors were very bearish in this area because they felt we'd broken out to a to new lows and we're on our way to much much lower prices. But people who were doing Bollinger Band analysis realized that we were making a W bottom is defined by Bollinger Bands, and we're looking for uh, this day right here, which is a sign of strength, which marked the end of this transition from a negative environment to this environment, which was a positive environment. Same thing went for here, but it's a more complex pattern, and it might have been a little bit harder to analyze, so we'll take a look at that as well. So the next question is, which way are prices going? And in order to do that, we're going to add a measure of the intermediate term trend to our chart. We use a 21-day period moving average for this. And it's become the base of our bands, but we're not putting it on as a moving average to use for crossovers. We're not going to buy when it's crossed above or sell when it crossed below. We want it to define the direction of the intermediate term trend. So here, the moving average is rising during most of this period, and prices are rising. Here, the moving average is falling during most of this period, and prices are falling. Here again, the moving average is rising, and prices are rising. What that means is we've defined a, a, a pretty good intermediate term trend indicator in terms of this moving average in the sense of the direction of the average, not in the sense of where it's crossed over or, or when it's crossed. In fact, we're not going to focus on crosses of the moving average at all. Um, we're simply going to focus on the direction of the moving average and we're going to use it as a basis um, for um, building trading bands, Bollinger Bands, using standard deviation. So that trend measure will become the middle Bollinger Band, base for our trading bands, and it's selected to describe the intermediate term trend. It is not selected to be a good crossover average. I hate to repeat that so many times, but it's really an important point. Um, I get a lot of email about um, crosses of the middle band, and I, I always write back and say you really ought to be focusing on other information um, that the bands are generating, that that middle band is less important than you think it is. Um, so here's an example of, of how to select a, a proper average for the middle band. The, we have some synthetic data here. It's the black line. It falls by one point per bar and then rises by one point per bar for 20 bars. And 
and falls by one point per bar for 10 bars and then rises to the end of the chart. I've drawn three moving averages on it. A red one, which is a short moving average, it's 10-day. Um, a green one, which is an intermediate term, it's 20-day. And a blue one, which is a long-term moving average, it's a 50-day. Clearly, the blue one is too long. Um, it gets crossed only long after the bottom is formed. Um, and um, even worse, um, it, it turns up only in here um, well, well into the new up leg. And the red one's too short. It gets nice that it's get crossed here, but it gets whipsawed on the first pullback, and this will shake traders out of their trend. Green one's absolutely perfect. It, it turns down, gets crossed on the first leg up, and it provides support to, on the first pullback. And it, the most important thing is it turns up on the first day after the second trough of the W. And that's, that, that, that's the key to um, this, this sort of analysis. And you can use the, these ideas with the vehicles that you trade and shift the averages around in length until you find one that has these basic properties. I suggest that 20, 19, 20, 21, 22 days, something in that range is about optimal for the people who are trading daily time periods um, in the U.S. stock market. And um, um, it's actually optimal for most things, but uh, you know, daily time frames in the U.S. stock market is the time frame that I personally trade the most. So Bollinger Bands answer the question as to whether prices are high or low. Um, and we're going to add Bollinger Bands to the chart now in, 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 in an effort to order that. Uh, Bollinger Bands are defined by volatility. Uh, it's a moving average and um, volatility is used to spread the upper band above the moving average and the lower band below the moving average. And they're very adaptive to changes in price and that's the key to the success of Bollinger Bands. So the upper band is simply that middle band that we started with plus n times the standard deviation. Um, in our case the default length is going to be 20 periods and the default width is two periods. So the upper band is a 20-day moving average plus two times the standard deviation of that very same 20 days worth of data. Middle band's just a 20-day moving average and lower band is that middle band less two times the standard deviation. Those are the default parameters for Bollinger Bands and um, they work for most things. Um, some people like to shorten them for, for some applications for very short-term charts for Forex and, and such like that. And that's perfectly acceptable but Point, my point here is that I think you should start at 20 periods and two standard deviations and then adjust from that if it's necessary. But I think for most things you won't find any adjustments necessary. So here are the Bollinger Bands um, on price here. And I think you can see that they provide a pretty good definition of what's relatively high and relatively low. Um, if you look here, um, over here we tag the uh, upper band, meaning prices were relatively high. Um, a little while later, we tagged the lower band, uh, meaning prices were relatively low, but the absolute price was, was the same. However, from a trading perspective, it's an entirely different situation. And that's what we mean by relative analysis. So uh, that price happens to be um, about 202. Um, so here, 202, at 202, prices relatively low. And here at 202, price is relatively high. It's a very important concept to wrap your mind around and, and is really um, important in the successful deployment of uh, Bollinger Bands. And here we can see that the, the big W that we've been talking about, um, a low made outside of the lower bands followed by a low um, made near or at the Bollinger Bands. Here we have a low set of lows made outside the Bollinger Bands followed by a set of lows made inside the Bollinger Bands. And that's going to be the key to our W pattern analysis. So I, I don't mean to repeat myself, but this is the core concept of Bollinger Bands. So if you, um, if you repeat after me, and uh, um, I'm going to turn, have a go to meeting, turn all your microphones on so I can hear you. So please repeat after me. Prices are high at the upper Bollinger Band. Hmm. Some of you didn't do it. And prices are low at the lower Bollinger Band. Oh, that's a little better. 
Anyway, you get the idea. It's the core concept behind not just Bollinger Bands, but in fact all trading bands, whether they're Donchian Bands or Percentage Bands or Keltner Bands or, or what have you. It, the basic idea is the same for all trading bands. So why do you use standard deviation as a volatility measure? Because of all the volatility measures, it's the most adaptive to rapidly changing prices. And why is that? It's because it emphasizes the outliers. Suppose that we're trading in a very narrow trading range, say 32, 33, 34, backing and filling for a month, a month or so, and then all of a sudden we start trending up, and we go 32, 34, 35, 37, 39. So all of a sudden, four trading days later, we're five points higher than the highest high of the past month. Right? What happens is Bollinger Bands take that, that calculation of standard deviation, takes that jump in prices and quickly impounds it into the calculation for Bollinger Bands, spreads the bands rapidly so that they adjust to the new price structure. And that's, that, that's why Bollinger Bands are successful as they are. It's entirely because of that calculation that's used inside the measure of standard deviation. So thus Bollinger Bands are quite sensitive to emerging trends and adapt quickly as price moves away from the average. Thus, they keep our relative definition of high and low germane to the price structure. That's the key here. So in order to go any further, I'm going to introduce the, the two indicators to you. The, the title of this seminar um, is uh, the most powerful Bollinger Band indicators. So I should explain what those are. Um, the most powerful Bollinger Band indicators are Bollinger Bands themselves the three lines, uh, which we treat as, as one indicator, but it's really a set of, uh, of three indicators. And then percent B, which tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands. And then bandwidth, which tells us how wide the Bollinger Bands are. So taken together, these are, are the, th the, the most important Bollinger Band indicators. If you had to take everything away from me, uh, all the other tools and techniques I created, all, all the volume indicators and all, all the relative strength, all the group and s analysis and everything else that I, I, I use so much in, in my day-to-day -day work, you had to say, take everything away and say, no, 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 you can't use any of that stuff anymore. Just, just a couple of indicators. you got to keep it simple. Straight up, Bollinger Bands, Percent B, and Bandwidth. I could, I could go forward with those. Um, I, I could get help by using some other things, but I could go forward and be successful with just those three. So percent B tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands. It's uh, derived directly from the formula for stochastics, which I learned from George Lane. Um, and here's the formula for percent B. It's the last price minus the lower Bollinger Band that quantity divided by the upper Bollinger Band minus the lower Bollinger Band. And of course, these are all programmed for you in, in the toolkit. So you don't need to do any of this math or you don't have to be concerned about this. But I know a lot of people like to understand what's behind the, the tools that they're using. So I, I always try to teach um, uh, you know, the, the, the core ideas to, so that you have greater confidence in what you're doing as you, as you go forward. So here's that same chart, and uh, um, it's a really important chart um, because now we've added percent B to it, and you see an entirely uh, new dimension. Let me get one of my drawing tools here. Um, I think I'll try the highlighter. So you note here we make a low, and then we make a higher low over here. Right. The key is is that little the key is is that this low is way outside of the lower Bollinger band but this low is barely outside the Bollinger bands and you can see that reflected in percent B which is dramatically lower here dramatically higher on the second low this is the definition of a W bottom, a new low in price that is not a new low in relation to the Bollinger Bands. Here, 
will have not the perfect example of it, but it was a very important time. And while people, on, especially on this down day right here, were looking for a price acceleration to the downside, we were looking at this chart over here and saying, well, this is setting up to be a pretty dramatic higher low in percent B. All we need is one strong up day, which we get over here. And we know that the back of this decline is broken, and we're looking for higher prices while everybody else is looking for lower prices. Of course, it's even clearer over here where we have a cascading waterfall of, of lower, lower prices. And the key there is, look at this, even as, as, as price is going into making new lows, percent B is making a series of higher lows. And then when we come down to the retest, percent B makes a much higher low than it had made prior. So this is a classic W bottom as defined by Bollinger Bands. The only thing which could have made it more interesting for me is if this low here had actually gone further and, and, and outside here and made an even lower low for price and then reversed back in, up on the same day as it did. That would have really set the bearish psychology in the market you know, even more dramatically and made this trade, which is a dead obvious trade for me, that much sweeter because I think we would have had even more acceleration to the upside. But as it was, we just came down and tied it uh, um, almost exactly. But when we looked at percent B, we saw this big divergence. So the next in indicator that we're going to look at is bandwidth. Now, I'm only really going to examine one aspect of bandwidth. There's, there, there's an awful lot of information in, in bandwidth, but we're just going to look at the bulge today. So bandwidth tells us how wide the bands are on a normalized basis. And it's simply the distance from the upper band to the lower band divided by the middle band. And again, all these calculations are taken care of for, of you, for taking care of for you in the software. So um, get, given the normal parameters for you statisticians out there, this is in fact equal to four times the 20 period coefficient of variation. And here's a picture of bandwidth. I just want you to focus on these two peaks in, in bandwidth here. I get my highlighter here and, and, and highlight them for you. This peak here and this peak here. Right. These are both what we call bulges. That is, they were the highest values in bandwidth for a long time. Um, and what that a bulge marks is the end of a trend. So this this bulge here marks the end of this downtrend, and this bulge here marks the end of this downtrend. Right? Squeezes, which are lows in Bollinger Bands, um, you can see one here, and uh, there's another one over here, are the opposite. They mark the beginning of things, or, or they set up places where trends can emerge from, but bulges mark the end of trends. And one thing we look at for, we won't even consider a W bottom as a valid pattern unless bandwidth peaks and turns down in the vicinity of the left-hand side of the W. It's an absolute must. So um, percent B and bandwidth, this is the most elemental view of a Bollinger Band analytics screen. And you know, before I talked about it, if you stole all the rest of my indicators from me, this is the, the view that I would end up with. Um, and here I've highlighted those two um, W bottoms for you. You can see the divergences in, in terms of percent B. You can see the peaks in bandwidth 
both on the left hand side of the W's that suggest that the down um, trend has been the back of the downtrend has been broken. The right hand side of the W's are classic retests of support. It was successful in both cases. And um, the the thing that we want to focus on here is that we want to wait for a sign of strength. In that case that occurs here. And in that in this case this occurs here. Let's see if I can get that. So it's it's there and it's there. Those are the two signs of strength. The sign of strength is simply a day in which you have greater than average range and greater than average volume. In this case, both ways we're looking for the expansion on the upside, and a sign of strength confirms the idea that the W bottom is in place. We talked a little bit earlier about using Bollinger Bands to identify places where the odds of success are in our place in our favor. Well, the odds of success are in our favor in a W pattern. Um, if we wait for the sign of strength, then the odds are even better. So um, we wait for confirmation of the market to confirm that our opinion that a W bottom is forming is in fact a fact in the price structure. Right? That improves our odds of success. The other thing that, that I want to point out, I'm going to go back a, a page here to um, a chart that's less annotated. I want to point out is that our risk is very well defined here. Our risk is that we make a new low, we take out that low, and our risk is that we take out that low. So if we buy here, I think I'll switch to the pen. Let me get the pen going here. I'll choose a nice uh, orange and uh, get the pen going. So our risk, say we enter here, is a trip there. Our risk, if we enter here, is a trip here. Um, but our reward, and I'll get another color here. purple, the royal color, our reward is a tag of the upper band. And again, our reward is a tag of the upper band. So you can see in these trades, not only do we have the criteria that the odds of success are, are good, but the risk-reward ratio is quite good. Um, on the left-hand side, it looks like it's about three and a half, almost four to one. And on the right-hand side, it looks like it's about three to one. Um, so that's what we're trying to get to here is places where um, you know the the odds of be placing a great trade are are pretty strong. So to review a little bit before I switch to the actual platform and look at some some current markets, um, Bollinger Bands define high and low on a relative basis. Um, you you all did repeat after me before about that, right? So you, you've got that in your memory well. Um, percent V tells us where we are in relation to the Bollinger Bands, and bandwidth tells us how wide the Bollinger Bands are. We're looking for trade setups where the odds are in our favor, reward is greater than risk, and we can minimize drawdown. We can get a lot done with just a few powerful tools, um, Bollinger Bands, percent V, and bandwidth. In a couple of minutes, we'll talk about some of the other tools we make available to you. Uh, as support tools, but these are the core tools for the Bollinger Band approach. We add other pieces very carefully um, using only one type of each tool. We're not going to toss in three or four different momentum to indicators. We're just going to use one momentum indicator. We're not going to toss in three or four kinds of volume indicators or accumulation distribution indicators. We're just going to use one. Um, and most importantly, we really want to avoid unnecessary complexity. I've analyzed a lot of trading systems over the years that I've been at this. And um, one of the things I've seen again and again is the more complex the system, uh, the more likely it is to fail or never work at all, really. Um, so if you find yourself having to build a very, very complex system in order to make it work, it's probably a bad idea and you should probably 
try to find uh, the real trading system inside that complex system, the small, simple system that's trying to get out. So use relatives, not absolutes. Don't don't worry about fixed price levels. You know, we're going to define high and low by the Bollinger Bands and never, never, never argue with the market. The market is always right and will inform the margin clerk that it is right. Capture your trade stats, find the correct position size, and exploit your edge. Um, this is very important. We don't have time to get into um, trade stats and position size today, but I just I really encourage you to ex explore this world. It's so important, and the average trader, the typical retailer trader, just isn't paying any attention to this whatsoever. I think it's a way in which you can really dramatically improve your performance and reduce, even more dramatically reduce, your risk of ruin. So um, I've gone through a lot of material in a short time. Um, and I'd like to send you um, a little bit of material. So I have a, a, a document called 22 Bollinger Band Rules, which is sort of a most frequently asked questions about Bollinger Bands. If you send me an email to rules at BollingerBands.com with 22 Bollinger Band Rules in the subject matter, I will send you back both um, the actual document with the 22 rules in it and I will send you an invitation to join our mailing list so we can tell you about webinars and uh, we, we, we mail very infrequently um, only when um, I'm going to be doing an event like this or, or, or something similar or, or we have a, a new um, toolkit or uh, something like that available. So um, again, rules at BollingerBands.com and I'll send you um, the 22 Bollinger Band rules. With that, I, I, it's the end of my formal presentation. Um, here are a couple of websites that you can come visit us at. The, the, the one you want to remember is BollingerBands.com because at the top of it are links to all of our other websites. So, with that, I will... And so now on your screen, you should see the Metastock platform. Um, uh, can somebody, uh, um, somebody uh, um, in the answer in the questions, let me know whether um, you can see the Metastock platform? We can see it. Okay, great. That's terrific. I just wanted to make sure that you you were seeing what I was seeing. So, I've done a couple of things here. Um, th this is just a, a very simple Metastock chart. Um, it happens to be of the SPY. Um, I've, uh, um, you have Bollinger Bands and volume. This is sort of the, the simplest possible Bollinger Band setup. And what I've done is I, I've, I've used this feature of Metastock that I, almost nobody uses, but I, I love. If you look down here on the bottom, um, on the bottom, they have these uh, uh, buttons which trigger, uh, which trigger templates. If you right-click on them, um, you can click Custom Toolbar Properties. And you can see that I've created a, um, a bunch of templates here um, and with links, a bunch of links to templates here that I created for this seminar. Um, I just find this, this feature of Metastock to be incredibly useful. Um, yeah, I, I, I love it to death. So, uh, for example, here we have our main chart. If I just click, um, if I just click here, um, it, it'll draw um, the, our main chart. But if I come over here, I just redraw the whole shebang to shift over to candlesticks, and um, there's my percent B. So I can just rapidly alternate between um, different um, ideas here. What I'm going to do is I'm, I want to change um, um, the symbol here. I'm going to change to uh, EWW, which happens to be the iShares um, Mexico fund. And um, we'll, we'll look at this again and again, but there you are, a beautiful W bottom in the Mexico fund uh, at the January bottom uh, here, a new low in relation to Bollinger Bands that was not a new low in relation to percent B. And um, I, I, I love this little bit of panic selling on the, on, on, on the final low, and the, the sign of strength comes on the very next day. So uh, here's, another, here's another idea. Um, 
for you that you can you can see um, in in terms of these W bottoms. But I'm going to add another dimension uh, here. I'm going to add a volume indicator from the toolkit because this to me is the essence of this sort of work. So we're going to focus on this area right here. I'll get rid of that. Uh, I get rid of the, uh, uh, the crosshair and just uh, um, get a volume line. So here's the first um, low. You can see we we, we have a, a multi-phase decline. Um, the percent B um, gets well below zero, saying, showing that we're low. We make the final low with percent B above the. The, its greatest intensity. That's actually pretty typical um, that you know you, you drift into the final low with a higher percent B reading. You get a rally all the way back up to the upper band. You, sometimes um, you don't get to the upper band. Most of the time you don't get to the upper band. But in these these country funds, in these country fund ETFs tend to be really volatile. They tend to be really good trading vehicles, and they behave very well in relation to um, the Bollinger Band. So. We come down here and make a new low. Now look down here. This is really super important. This is a volume indicator. Um, it happens to be intraday intensity, 21-day intraday intensity. When we make this first low, look how deep in negative territory this indicator is. We call this a confirmed new low. right? Then we come over here on the other side and look. It's actually in positive territory. We're at exactly the same price level. Right, we come down and, and we're just above the upper lower band. We were able to tag it here. But this time the indicator is in positive territory. We call that an unconfirmed tag. Right? And that's the core of the original Bollinger Band approach. When I designed Bollinger Bands, they were, it was, they were designed to use a volume indicator like intraday intensity and to compare price action in relation to the bands to the action of an accumulation distribution indicator that showed the supply demand characteristics. And this is I, just yesterday when I was flipping through some charts, I saw this beautiful example uh, of this. You don't, you know, you don't see these all that often. When you when you see them, you can really act upon them with great confidence. Occurred again over here. We have a, another W setup over here, negative territory and in intraday intensity. You come back here, um, you retest the W. Right, and intraday intensity is is positive. And that's what I mean about these um, about these lovely um, uh, single country ETFs. They really trade well in relation to this sort of analysis that that we have um, here. This this coupling of price action inside a Bollinger Band framework um, with uh, supply and demand. I'll show you another. Let's get rid of that. I'll show you another. Um, here I have attached one of my experts um, to. Um, I've attached attached one of my experts um, to the chart here. It just highlights squeezes and bulges, and and highlights every bar that is either at the lower Bollinger Band or at the upper Bollinger Band. So. Let me get my spotlight back. Up here, these green bars mean that we've tagged the upper band. These red bars mean that we have tagged the lower band. These Bs mean that we have a bulge. What do we know about a bulge? It's the end of a trend. So as soon as bandwidth turns down, we know that this downtrend is over, and we start looking for this W bottom to complete. Here's a squeeze, which tells us that something is about to be born. We go through here and we get this climax decline throughout here. Here's another bulge which marks the end of this downtrend and the beginning of this pattern which leads into this high. Let's see. I think I have a couple I have a couple more for you. I'm exactly out of time here um, and I want to answer some questions. Um, so let me Yes, okay, I'll just show you this one. In my book, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, I, I, I 
presented three methods, and I've added one since then, of um, uh, of generating buy and sell signals um, with Bollinger Bands. And those methods are available in the toolkits. I've plotted them here all together on the same on the same chart, um, and you can you can see they 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 are different. What you do is you want to find out which one's signaling. You just float your your um, cursor over it, and that that's a a buy signal from from method two over here. This will sell you tell you that it's a sell signal from method one. Um, method one is a, a, a compression um, and release method. Um, it's one of the um, one of the more important methods. Um, so you can see that you have a, a, a all of them plotted through here. You can either plot them one at a time, um, or you can plot them um, uh, all together like this. In I, I just made them in different colors so, so I could see them as they developed. Up here I want to show you what some of the tools that come with the Bollinger Band toolkit are. Uh, Jeff is going to go into this a little bit more, but I just wanted to get you to get a feel for what's going on here. We have um, the, the classic um, Bollinger Band indicators. Um, um, we have accumulation distribution. It's a volume indicator. We have a marker for when stocks have been above the upper band and are back in, or below the lower band and are back in. Um, we have um, themselves. Um, we have a breakout, um, a breakout approach. We have the three, the four methods. We have the, our money flow index, which we believe is calculated the correct way. We have normalized volume and uh, a group of other volume indicators. I'm really running out of time, but I want to get to one more that's really important. That is, you can explore on on all of these. Um, like we just made a bottom in the market over here. I, I, I'm sure everybody's been focusing on that. We've certainly been focusing um, on that. And so when we made that um, we made that bottom um, when we made that bottom, we um, ran this exploration. And generated a list of stocks that had um, that had been outside the lower Bollinger Band as Mexico Fund had, and they closed back inside the lower Bollinger Band. So this was basically a superb list of buy candidates at the reversal at the lower Bollinger Band. So we could easily focus in on the stocks that had been the most oversold, and we're now back in normalized territory to see whether we could find. Our group of buy candidates um, in there. The other one um, I, I ran at the, at the same time was um, back in from above. I was curious to see um, uh, how many we would have. weren't very many, but these were stocks that were strong enough, even in the middle of this three or four day decline um, that we had here. These were stocks that were strong enough to actually have broken out above the upper band and were now back inside the band. So. You relative strength get people. Um, this is a great list for you to look at to see if uh, any of your favorite stocks uh, show up here um, as uh, um, potentially um, stocks that are walking up the upper band, what we call um, doing a prolonged walk up the upper band. So that's just a few of the features that are available in the Bollinger Band Toolkit. Um, again, the other part um, that we've worked on Metastock with is the Bollinger Band system, which goes through and scans a big universe of stocks for you know, nice, reliable buy and sell signals, um, and then presents you a list. It does it, obviously, automatically overnight um, so that you can um, look at that. So with that, I thank you very much for spending some time with me today. I know I went fast and covered a tremendous amount of material. The replay will be available. and. Um, I turn you over to the tender mercies of Jeffrey Gibby. Hey, John. Do you want to take three questions? I've promised I'd ask three questions. Sure. I, okay. I'll take as many questions as you like. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had a question that came in that um, uh, said, how effective is this for trading intraday or uh, using intraday periodicities like 60, 30 minutes, those type of things? It's, it's very effective. I showed you what I do most of the time when I came into this market you know, commissions were very high and spreads were very wide, so intraday trading wasn't really possible for anybody but um, an actual market maker or um, 
uh, a proprietary trader at at one of the one of the firms. Um, so I learned daily trading, and, and and that that's that's what I've kind of stuck with over the years. But occasionally I do like to to you know have a little recreational outing into intraday trading, and um, these tools work perfectly um, in intraday trading. In fact, the forex traders are mad for them. Um, it's it, I would say that fully a quarter of our email um, that comes in comes in with questions from forex traders who are trading. Um, very short-term time periods um, with um, intraday um, uh, Bollinger Bands. Often, you know, not just half hour or hourly, but you know, often one minute or or, or, or even um, uh, tick bars. And I, I note that in 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 um, version 14, for the first time, um, MetaStock is going to be supporting tick bars. And so I have a um, I have a small comment about that. Is just make sure that you have enough ticks in each bar so you get a really good picture of the price formation mechanism in, in, in at, at work. I don't think bars of two or three or four ticks are very useful for for the sort of work um, that that we're doing. You know, bars with a for an active stock with a few hundred ticks in them and stuff, stuff like that give you a better picture of the price formation mechanism, the price discoveries mechanism at work, and I think will make um, for a better trading environment. Second question. Uh, Christopher actually chimed in and said, I use uh, Bollinger Bands on 5 and 15, and I absolutely love it. So thanks for that comment, Christopher. Appreciate that. Um, I lost the second question, but it had to do with crude oil and Forex. So I think you answered it. <laughs> so I interestingly enough, um, um, the, the, there's an entire population of traders out there that are mad for trading crude crude on an intraday basis with Bollinger Bands. I just discovered this like three months ago. I didn't even know they existed. And I stumbled across one of them, and he introduced me to a whole bunch more um, traders. So I was I was very surprised, um, simply because I didn't know, not because I didn't think, it, think that it would work. But apparently, in the, the, the crude market, and the forex market are amongst the most popular intraday markets for trading with Bollinger Bands. That kind of leads into the next question we have, John, which is like, if you're if you're switching from like a daily to a weekly chart, or from a daily to an intraday, do you change the settings of like the Bollinger Bands, or are you always looking at the same amount of periods? I do not. Um, I, I usually stick my to my twenty and two. I, I'm not inflexible about that. Often I'll find that you know bands like twenty five or thirty, something like that, are necessary for this instrument, or fifteen or twelve are necessary for that instrument. But the truth is, is that if I, I find myself wanting to change the length by very much, what I do is I change the time frame instead. So if I if I find that I I'm, I'm looking at a daily chart and I really want to have shorter bands because the, the the 20 bands just aren't giving me the picture I want, I'll go to a, a two hour chart instead, and and stick with my 20 my my, my 20 periods. I, I find that works better for me. That that changing the 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 time frame um, is is has more utility for me than changing um, the 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 constants for the Bollinger Bands. Having said that, I know some people that trade, you know, with like, you know, 10 period Bollinger Bands and, and 1.5 standard deviation and, 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 and have never traded anything else and wouldn't think about anything else. So it's largely a matter of opinion and trading style. A lot of questions regarding that I'm going to answer, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but a lot of recordings, a lot of comments. Uh, uh, this has been a great webinar. I want to keep the recording in my library. Um, is this going to be available? Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, John doesn't disappoint. I, I just answered one question. Somebody asked about a departure chart, um, Go ahead. and that's available as a regular. Um, that's a reg available as a regular um, um, meta stock indicator. Um, it's just the spread between two moving averages. It's what we used to call them in the very old days. You know, uh, back there when cavemen were, were were out with the clubs, we called um, the difference between two moving averages a departure chart. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that it's a um, I'm pretty sure that it's a regular. Um, 
it's a, a regular um, Metastock function. Um, but I just can't remember it. Remember it. But if you can't, uh, um, if if you can't find that function, just use MACD because that's what MACD is. MACD is a, is a departure chart with an extra moving average. And a tip for those of you that uh, want to do MACD on different moving averages, um, what you'll use is the, uh, oh man, now I might not be able, to, I think it's called the, uh, oh, price oscillator. Got it. That If you want to use, because when Gerald uh, Appel developed MACD, it was with fractional moving averages like 0 0.87, 0 0.15, or something like that. And so that's hard-coded into Metastock. There's a price oscillator that allows you to go in and perform a MACD light calculation using any any average length that you want. Yes, yeah, so this is perfect. I just pulled it up on the screen um, so that you have a short-term moving average. It's, it defaults to 1. Um, a long-term moving average defaults to 25. It, for the classic departure chart that we always used, 10 and 20 would be the numbers for you. Very cool. And then to answer all the questions about the recording, yes, we are going to make it available and on our YouTube channel. And we are going to send them to everybody. Um, uh, uh, we'll probably have them available by the weekend. Usually my video time takes a day or two to make them nice and pretty and uh, uh, ready for YouTube, so to speak. So, All right, cool. I think that's the end of the questions, unless you see more. No, that's good. And, and you know, if you want to, uh, um, if you want to ask me a question about something, uh, drop us a note. It's um, instead of rules at BollingerBands.com for the 22 rules, it's um, bbands at BollingerBands.com, and um, we'll see if we can't um, hook you up with the information you need. I'm typing that in the chat for everybody too. So it's, uh, for the rules, the 22 rules. Was it 21 or 22? 22. It used to be 21. We added one more. And that is at BollingerBands.com, right? Rules at BollingerBands.com. Correct. Okay. We'll type that out in the chat so people will, will have it in the show notes as well. So, okay. Very cool. Well, uh, there are a few things that I want to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and take over uh, the control of the screen. And I just want to, uh, should be able to see this. I actually had, um, somebody had a question about a, uh, open intensity, and so I was looking at that. John did allude to the fact that we do have two of his add-ons, and uh, they're two of our most popular add-ons. I just want to show you a little bit of a chart here. Uh, well, the chart's in a second, but um, the difference is Bollinger Band System is a method that we work with John to develop that's a proprietary trading method. Um, it uses some really cool technology. It has self-adaptive indicators, uses like money flow index, percent B, BVI to find stocks that are likely to reverse a trend. And um, it includes quite a few different indicators, but it's more of a trading system, which is why we call it the Bollinger Band system. It's exclusive for Metastock. Uh, and so what it, basically your, your workflow is, it's basically you run a watch list maker, which goes through all the stocks and tells you which ones you should use with the systems. And then you have a daily scan that you can run to find either the recent signals or the signals that happened today. And it's, it's a fully automated system. So once you pull that commentary in, it's going to tell you exactly where your stop loss should be, how long you're going to be in the trade, and whether or not you should get out of it using the commentary feature within Metastock. The thing that's pretty cool is it's been a, uh, it's been a, rated in stocks and commodities as the winner, the first runner-up, the finalist, the semi-finalist for many, many years, as you can see on the screen, uh, combined with Bollinger Band Toolkit and Bollinger Band System. This, this, those two add-ons have won something like 20 times, uh, which is kind of funny because they compete with each other as well because uh, one of them has to win and one of them has to be the winner. So they're very, very good plugins. The Toolkit... Basically, with, with Bollinger Band Toolkit, what we did uh, with a lot of help for John is we took the book Bollinger on Bollinger Band. So we made all of the indicators that he really discusses in that book into a toolkit. And it includes basically 64 custom tools built for Metastock. All of the formulas and methodologies, like I said, are discussed in his book. They're all open source, so you can kind of go in and see what they're calculated. It's a great um, combination with his book. 
In fact, I would recommend that in addition to buying the toolkit, you get his book because it's uh, very well rated on Amazon. It's one of the ones that if you're serious about trading, you want to read John's work. And this is, uh, this is the one to get. So in any case, I made a list. Uh, John did a really good job of showing the indicators in Metastock, but I made a list of the just what's included. Uh, so you could get an idea of kind of the indicators that are included in it. Um, uh, here's some more indicators that are included with that. Uh, a comparison indicator that compares the relative trace versus the S&P 500. Uh, the scans that, that John was talking about, so you can go in and find the ones that have gone down below the bands and up above it. It's a very, very comprehensive toolkit. And this product itself actually has won, uh, this year it was a finalist, it's won several awards in the stocks and commodities. So between the two products, it's probably our most successful most award-winning add-on um, that we've had. So, so um, I would say it's one that I'm very proud of helping make, but it was before I actually helped uh, make add-ons, and so I didn't. Uh, but it's a great add-on. Uh, they're only $299, and a lot of times when we start talking about prices, they're like uh, people think per month. You know, oh, I had to buy this every month, and it's 300 bucks a month. This is a one-time cost. Uh, and so normally they're $299 each. Uh, if you buy them both together, I'm going to give you a package price. It's $398 for both of them. Um, to do that, though, you, uh, we didn't put together a web page. You have to call in to get it, or you can chat in. So 800-882-3040 would be the number to call. We have people here that can help you. They'll be happy to answer questions that you've got. And you can chat in if you're in India or overseas and you want to just chat with somebody and start to kind of get that process going. Uh, go to metastock.com forward slash sales chat. Um, in, but, you know, you should get this. It's a great tool. There's a reason it's been rated uh, so highly in stocks and commodities for so many years. Uh, and there's a reason that everybody knows Bollinger Bands is almost like a uh, well, if you don't know Bollinger Bands, uh, you probably haven't been trading for too long. It's just a, it's just a great product. So I'd recommend it. It needs to be part of your trading toolkit arsenal and uh, for $3.98. Uh, also, if you are new to Metastock uh, or if you don't have Metastock now, that package price actually includes a trial to Metastock as well. So anyway, give us a call, 800-882-3040 or chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. That's what I had to say. Whew, we, we ended up exactly on time, John. That is unusual. I guess he's, uh, all right. Uh, well, I want to thank John. Uh, great class, uh, great lesson. Uh, Glenn says, what version of Metastock does this work on? Um, I believe it's anything after 12. Or Sorry, I, I didn't realize that you had unmuted me. I'm still here. Oh, well, um, I don't know what I asked you now. <laughs> oh, we ended on time. Oh, yeah, well, that's because I spoke too fast. <laughs> no, I think you did great. I mean, we have a lot of awesome comments. You did an awesome job today. Well, In fact, Irene said, thank you for such a wonderful seminar and a presentation. So. Oh, well, thank you. All yeah. right. So we'll see you guys at the next one. And I really appreciate you guys coming. And John, great class. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank, thanks to everybody. And uh, I, I, I wish you very successful trading. Okay. And with that, we'll see you, we'll see you next time.